Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Nizio Cole, and welcome to my Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1 review. We've been waiting for this moment for a very long time, and I can confidently say that the episode definitely did not disappoint. First off, spoiler warning for anything Crisis on Infinite Earths. Massive spoilers. You know what? Matter of fact, I'm just going to put a spoiler sign on the bottom right of the video for the entire video, just so you guys know. Don't, yeah, just, just don't if you haven't watched the video. I don't care if you like spoilers or not. So we start off with kind of this narration from the monitor of the origins of the multiverse, and he's talking while a flyby of other Earths get destroyed. Uh, there were a lot of DC references that I honestly didn't really understand because I hadn't really watched the older like Batman and uh, Superman TV shows but but the one I did understand was Earth 9 which was destroyed and if you guys haven't watched the episode Earth 9 is the Titans universe like DCU Titans it was a shot of Hawk and Jason Todd's Robin looking over what looked like to be some sort of volcano or something but yeah they're gone so uh I, i'm not actually sure if that was the actual titans universe like titans from dc universe or if it was like from their perspective earth to titans it could have been it could have gone either ways because i mean there's going to be a season three of titans you know uh i don't know why they would just kill them off like that unless either they somehow find a way to get the universe back or titans doesn't continue i i don't know they will figure that out it's only the first episode but uh yeah so Harbinger at the end of last episode of Arrow, uh, which I still have to do a review on, but I will upload that later after all this crisis stuff is over. But uh, Harbinger, she goes to all the different Earths. She goes to Legends. She says, time to go. Uh, she goes to Batwoman. Uh, and uh, Batwoman actually isn't that happy about Harbinger taking her because she was in the middle of, if you guys haven't been watching Batwoman this season, oh, spoilers for Batwoman, by the way, but she's trying to uh, see if there's any soul left in her uh her twin sister i guess uh who's now a super villain so they're like fighting each other when harbinger came and took her she was interrogating one of her minions or whatever um and yeah she wasn't too happy about that she actually punched harbinger in the face yeah so uh she goes around she gets legends batwoman oliver and mia barry and she takes them all to earth 38 and uh well actually the episode before this there were you know red skies just like crisis or just like uh elseworlds um so they already knew that was gonna happen the antimatter wave uh kind of well, let's say it, it crossed over to Argo, which is the planet that Superman and Lois Lane are living on, as well as about, I think it was said to be 4.5 billion people um, on a, a planet out in space. And yeah, that got destroyed. Superman and Lois Lane's son, Jonathan, he actually got sent out in a pod, which is Kara's mom did not survive the antimatter wave, so she's dead rest in peace clark and lois thought they were dead too but uh, harbinger came and took them at the last moment so harbinger rounded all these people up they already know the crisis is here so they get together um a, not like a big tower comes out of the ground and it is said that this is uh what, what they call a quantum tower that the monitor placed these on key earths at the beginning of the multiverse just in case something like this happened and a quantum tower is supposed to defend and protect against the red skies and the antimatter wave well uh yeah the antimatter sent some of the shadow demons to come and uh stop that from happening all the heroes are trying to do their thing meanwhile on earth uh what was it earth 16 i don't know if you guys remember that one episode of legends in season one where they went to that alternate reality of star city apparently they went to a different earth and th on that earth sarah died on the gambit and uh yeah he was like super surprised you know because uh that's actually where well actually i forgot to mention that's where jonathan when they sent him off he actually went through a wormhole and that's where he landed he landed in star city or earth 16 should i say 2046 uh near the bunker so uh yeah that is a lot of coincidences the same place that legends accidentally wound up in season one and uh they had to fight their way out is the same place that jonathan's pod landed which uh so lois is there but i think the real reason they added that scene in was kind of to get like a recognition that oliver has changed like a lot and it was a really nice scene between sarah and oliver and they were talking and sarah was like you're worth it i mean you you've literally saved the universe so that was a really nice touching scene um but uh he's dead now so yeah, that sucks. Anyways, we go back to the battle on top of the quantum tower. Yeah, they're, they're trying to fight them off as much as they can. But then the monitor comes in and he's just like, the battle's lost. You guys gotta go, right? And he, he teleports everyone out, right? But then Oliver's like, is everyone evacuated? He says, not entirely. 
So then he's like, okay, well then it's not over. And he just keeps on fighting. And he actually hits the monitor with that, uh, what, what I'm assuming to be that weapon that they developed based on the antimatter wave a few episodes ago. So apparently they did actually finish the weapon. Um, I guess he was just keeping it as a precaution just in case the monitor tried to double cross somebody and it actually stops him. Oliver dies and he teleports to Earth-1 in the bunker. Um, he says some really nice remarks. Apparently he saved it. What, I was a bit confused because there was a part where he said uh, three Oliver saved three billion people, but one billion survived, which I was a little bit confused by. I, I, I you know, just if you have any answers to that, let me know down in the comments because I don't know, it's a bit confusing. But um, yeah, I think honestly, Oliver has finally written his wrongs. You know, all the people he's killed over the years, everything that he's done wrong, saving a billion people is a lot. You know, even if those four billion people died, I mean, at least he did something. He was fighting till the very last moment. But uh, one thing interesting that I thought um, was that it, it was so early. I mean, we already knew Oliver was going to die since the season seven finale, but it was just really soon, the first episode of Crisis. So uh, it kind of makes me think that there might be some other trick at play. And even the monitor, he was like, this isn't how you were supposed to die. I saw your death. And this guy's super powerful, you know, so I don't know. I think there's something fishy going on i don't think he actually died or maybe he goes back in time or a doppelganger or something i i honestly i really don't know but we're just gonna have to wait and see uh tonight is when another episode comes out well this video is probably coming out the t around the time that the um episode comes out so yeah i'm excited for that i'm gonna be waiting for that one more thing before i end the video that i wanted to touch on was that there is a little kind of like after show that comes on after crisis and it is called Crisis Aftermath. It's uh, Kevin Smith. He brings on different directors, show writers, producers. I think oh, the main two people, Kevin Smith and Mark Guggenheim. And they uh, last night they brought on Cat Nero. They played games. They talked about trivia and stuff like that. But one of the, the main big things that they talked about was when we go, after we go on break in January, when the shows come back, there's actually going to be an episode talking about the origin of the anti-monitor and the monitor and talking about the costume and everything. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much all I want to talk about episode is mm, eight out of ten uh definitely a really solid episode I, I love to see the chemistry with everyone but uh yeah hopefully i think black lightning is going to be in this episode so i'm excited for that one because uh i don't i don't know if a lot of people like black lightning but black lightning is one of my favorite dc shows so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and comment down below any thoughts opinions or theories that you have for crisis on infinite earths and i'll see you guys later peace